Hello, everybody, and welcome to another OpenShift Commons gathering. Um, this time we have a new member to the OpenShift Commons, um, CollabNet, um, but they're um, longtime folks that I've uh, loved working with in the past. So I'm really looking forward to hearing the update today on everything they're doing in the DevOps space. Um, we have with us Eric Robertson and Franco Alabaster from CollabNet. I'm going to let them introduce themselves, and we'll have Q&A in the chat. And then after um, the presentation and demonstration is done, we'll have some live Q&A. So um, without any further ado, please, Eric, take it away. Great, great. Thanks, Diane. So my name is Eric Robertson. I lead the DevOps uh, business unit here at CollabNet, and I am joined with two colleagues. I'm Don Freeman and um, Franco Alvestro. Franco, you want to start off and introduce yourself? Sure. Um, I'm Franco. I'm uh, doing a lot of fun things over here, especially with the um, DevOps architecture and <clears throat> integrating OpenShift uh, to the products that we offer to add instant value and visibility. Great. Don? Hello, my name is Don Freeman. Um, I'm one of the product architects in development on the DevOps product line. Thank you. Thanks, thanks. So what I'd like to do is start off with um, a company overview, and then I, it's a couple of topics I'm going to talk about before we introduce the solution. I really want to hit home on the importance on what I'm seeing and customers are telling me the importance of accelerating this concept of DevOps idea to delivery pipeline. Why is that important? Why is it important to, um, to remove bottlenecks and, and to really um, move that um, idea to delivery pipeline to realization? Next, I'll talk about a concept that customers are using and industry is starting to use as far as to be able to measure that. Um, this is the concept of lean value, value streams, basically be able to measure your tool chain to provide visibility. And we're going to do this through uh, <clears throat> to talk about how this is enabled through the combination of Red Hat OpenShift with the Kalana DevOps lifecycle management product. And then that, we're going to showcase through a walkthrough and demo, and then we'll have a summary, and then we'll have some follow-up questions. Okay, so Kalanet at a glance. So Kalanet has been around for, founded in 1999, I'm um, installed headquarters in South San Francisco. Um, we've been the leader in the application lifecycle management, agile, DevOps, um, and collaborative solutions. Many of you may know us from uh, Subversion. Um, we were one of the first open source uh, version control solutions out there in the market. We have over 10,000 customers, um, <clears throat> and we have over 250 employees across the globe. And of course, we're a Red Hat technology partner. So I really like to talk about you know, what is our definition around the DevOps. You know, everybody has their definition, and I kind of start off with the the CAMS, the CAMS definition, which is the acronym describing the core values of the DevOps movement. Many of you remember um, it was coined by Damon Edwards, John Willis at the DevOps days, Mountain View back in 2010. Some of you may be uh, lucky enough to be able to witness that. But it really is around the culture automation measurement and sharing. And Lean was brought in a little bit later by um, just, just how I, I remember. And what's key here is a lot of folks have already started down the path on the culture aspect, which is really around you know, breaking down these barriers with the team and how to re reduce um, waste um, among, um, among the, the, the teams and the processes among those teams. And, and from there, automation became perhaps the most visible aspect of the DevOps. And many people use that to focus on productivity gains. Um, and it's a, one of the main drivers um, um, to, to, to adopt uh, DevOps. But automation wasn't really just used to save time, but it was also more for corrective actions and things of that nature, prevent defects, and enable self-service. And OpenShift, as you know, has become very key component in there is providing automation and streamlining, especially um, developing, um, deploying um, container-based applications. Measurement is one I really want to focus on because I, I think that's one now that customers are really starting to look at and really starting to identify. And measurement is really around how can I have continuous improvement 
without the ability to measure that improvement, right? How do I know if that automation task is really worthwhile, right? So it's about how can I collect this information, collect this data, and be able to take uh, action on it. Sharing is a piece where it's also kind of core. Now, a lot of people see this as, as sharing as far as kind of extension of culture, similar needs, finding people with similar needs across the organization, being able to capture these best practices. And what I want to talk about is how we're able to capture these best practices, but in context of your process, in context of your tools from, from improvement. And, and it's all part of tying into that, uh, <clears throat> that uh, measurement enablement. Okay. So the first piece of this is accelerating the DevOps idea to delivery pipeline. And to be very simplistic, it's really about how do I get these ideas which come from lines of business, it comes from individuals, but how do I get this into production and get this delivered to the customer quickly, right? And this is this idea to delivery pipeline. In other words, how do I quickly remove the bottleneck so that idea can be realized by the customer? Because as soon as it's realized by the customer, that's where the value comes in, right? And also a key part of this is I want to be able to get feedback so I can optimize the process. Not just feedback from the customer, but feedback throughout my process, uh, my deli idea delivery pipeline. Because if I could get feedback, I could remove bottlenecks, I could take action immediately on that. It's kind of similar to how if I wanted to get from location A to location B, I have Google Maps and Google Maps can map that out for me. It can, now or newer technologies now, you can even have a car, I don't like to drive it, right? But what happens when I have um, a roadblock in there, right? If I know about those ahead of time, I can alternate my, my, uh, my, my destination path there, where I'm able to still reach my destination based upon the time that I have set, right? And optimize that delivery. And so this is constantly being able to provide this feedback across this idea of delivery pipeline to continuously improve the application delivered, the environments that are being deployed, and the overall application environment delivery process. Okay, so why is this such a challenge? Where, if you look at your idea to delivery pipeline, it could be a lot of steps, right? If I look at it just at a high level, I got planning, coding, building, release, deploy, got monitoring and operations um, piece, typically monitoring operations piece was kind of not in, in, the, in the developer planning world, didn't really care too much about it. But in our new DevOps world, I do need to care. It's, all, it's part of my value, this value stream that we're talking about here, right? It's all about how do I get that, that, that requirement and those requirements quickly um, into the hands of uh, those features, into the hands of in, in the customers, and provide that feedback um, overall. Now, part of this process is what makes this a little bit challenging is for each one of these steps that I have that I see here, I can have multiple tools involved, right, in driving that process and, 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 and capturing that information. And so for us, it's really about how do I get visibility from that planning to ops overall, right? So as you know, there's many tools in my tool chain here. And these tools are all generating their own events, their own information across this life cycle here, right? Now, typically, if you wanted to understand, let's say, what's going on in planning, how does that relate to development, how does it relate to build, release, and the rest of this, I'm pulling log files or information individually from these tools. And what's nice about um, the Red Hat OpenShift is Red Hat OpenShift starts bringing this platform where I'm tying in pieces of my development tools, build tools, release and, release and deployment capability, especially around containers, right? And are collecting these events, organizing the events in such a way where I can optimize my process of very quickly, especially utilizing the source to image technology, S2I technology, very quickly, Connecting to my repository and getting getting this application out and, and deploy. What's key here is I have other tools that are part of my process that may sit outside of the 
over shift route, right? But this key piece is part of my value stream. So it's very important for me to be able to connect holistically all my tools together in context with the OpenShift platform as well. Once I'm able to get this data, I'm now essentially monitoring my entire tool chain from planning to the operation. And now what I could do is I could start executing rules on this and do alerting um, and take actions on this. Um, so if I'm going down this chain, I could quickly understand what's happening and make corrective actions immediately. And the last piece, is the reporting aspect of that and understanding my entire pipeline, what is my status, how is it looking, and what are the potential bottlenecks that I need to start identifying or looking at and remedy um, um, that are inhibiting me from, from uh, releasing this application. Okay. So one is tool chain integration, automation, event collection, two, that continuous monitoring piece, and the three is the, re is the reporting aspect. Okay. So let's, let's drill down a little bit in, in depth here. So let's say I have a tool chain here. I got multiple tool chains. And I got one that is utilizing this set of tool chain, the first one that you see here. And I got a second one that's utilizing a tool chain. I may be leveraging tools that may be hosted within OpenShift or may exist outside of OpenShift but I have a connection to it. Um, as part of that coding all the way to that monitoring type of process here. But what, what we allow you to do is those projects and those applications that you have within with OpenShift, we allow you to group them together into value streams, right? So for example, we have Pet Store, and Pet Store may have application, sub -applic multiple applications that are multiple pro or may even contain multiple projects within OpenShift that allow me to tie that together. But what's nice is I'm tying in and I'm bringing in external tools into the mix as well, right? Like my planning tools up top, like my JIRA, and let's say my operational tools, maybe some chat out tools, maybe ServiceNow, I can now start bringing them into the picture and start measuring information like plans to deploy, cycles to, to resolve, deployment frequency, and I can start comparing this. One of the other interesting things is I may have a value stream or this tool chain here that may totally exist out of, uh, out of OpenShift. And let's say that it's utilizing some legacy type of tools for doing deployment and things of that nature or maybe some manual type of activity. And then I have a very similar tool chain but it's utilizing um, the OpenShift. I can now start measuring and you can start seeing how efficient that are more efficient, actually. The Red Hat, a tool chain based on the Red Hat platform is actually performing better and is actually more efficient, which is incredible because now you actually have data to showcase to your organization, to folks to say, we need to put more investment toward this, toward this platform because we're seeing, we're seeing the return here, right, in the measurements here. So that's what's nice. So what we do is we bring and collect that across, as you can see from this orange is DLM, brings in your, your planning, all the way to your operations, including your Red Hat uh, platform uh, tools as uh, well. So once you're able to do that, what's nice here is that I can have a dashboard at a high level that shows my planning all the way to my operations in the current state here, right? So immediately, I can start getting alerts as far as, um, you know, OpenShift just to successfully deploy. Uh, we had, looked like we had a little issue with Kubernetes. We could do a, a corrective action there that you'll see in the demo, how we do that to, to remediate that. And I'm also getting also information across my value stream that may not have a dependency on, on OpenShift, like an SAP error that occurred. But it's key for driving a, a SAP combo container-based type of application um, um, that I'm running within my organization. Another key piece here is the rule. So what's nice here is that I can have rules based on events to drive alerts, right? So I can have alerts that say, hey, I want to know when a user story is blocked, right? If 
I have one bill failure, and that's not really too interesting, but if I have multiple ones, I probably want to be alert to find out what's going on here, right, and understand better. Um, I mentioned remediation type procedures or run books, right? We're going to showcase that. I may want to open up a service desk ticket. I may want to notify me of chat outs on any of the conditions of the rules I set, right? And I may want to know, like, for example, if I get a security alert, a security check, I want, to, I want that escalated, and I want to know about that, right, in context of my, of my process well, right? So I can set, based upon these events, I can set these rules, and this is where the knowledge sharing comes into play because now I can start collecting best practices that I could use across my, my tool chain and value streams as well. The other key piece of this is the metrics. Now that I'm collecting this data, I can now start having holistic type of KPIs, like mean time to resolution, right, across. Because I'm now getting data from my planning, and I'm getting data from my deployment, like for mobile shift, and I'm getting data from, like, my ticketing system. So I can start having holistic type of reports and views across my entire organization. Dev cycles to resolution. I can even start looking at cost, bringing in cost metrics. If I really want to understand the value of how, of how much this feature that I'm working on, how much it actually costs me, how much rework is actually costing me as well. Information I can now have visibility into um, across, across that. Okay? So what I want to do is I want to turn it over to, um, to Don, and what he's going to do is he's going to do a, a walkthrough. What I want to highlight and show in there is we're going to talk about how we have the Red Hat platform here, and then you, I'm sure you're all familiar with this, this architecture here. And what we want to talk about is how we're able to link in and bring in, let's say, your planning type tools, right, and link into that lifecycle for lifecycle automation. And then you're, you're maybe linking in some other third-party integration tools that may already be tied in to, uh, uh, to OpenShift, but maybe external ones that are not. But we're still able to give you visibility into it. And then also linking into your container, the container management. So extending the, monitor, the great monitoring that you already have within, Red Hat, within the OpenShift platform, extending it out to external type tools and bringing that information in as well. This is all about Again, quickly, quickly driving that idea to delivery pipeline through visibility and through action. Okay. So with that, I'm going to transfer it over to Don. I think Don, you can. I'm going to stop sharing, and I think Don, you should be able to share on your system. Okay. <clears throat> Let me get into this. Let's see. Let's see if we can make this one look. Okay. Are you able to see my screen okay? I should be showing three OpenShift projects. Absolutely. Yeah. Thanks. I do. I do. All right, great. Uh, so like Eric said, I'm going to walk through an end-to-end -end demo where we go through an entire life cycle for a uh, particular feature um, spanning a lot of tools. In this example, we bring in tools um, of course, the OpenShift platform, as well as tools outside, uh, such as Jira, uh, Splunk, um, uh, ServiceNow, and those types of things. So just to show how we can manage through value streams the, the entire life cycle. So um, here around our sample application pet store, I have three projects for uh, managing the application as well as, as various services. Pet store is the one that we'll focus on in this demo. Uh, here we can see that it's deployed. Um, it's out to one pod right now, and this is this is the application that we'll be interacting with uh, during this this demo. Now, Eric showed in uh, in his slides uh, our value stream dashboard. So we have the concept of value stream cards, where I can quickly see the value streams or the solutions or services that I'm monitoring with the DLM, and I can see high level KPIs for those value streams to understand um, you know, how they're currently performing. I can also quickly see the health of those value streams, both uh, the value stream health as well as activity health. Value stream health means that my KPIs are staying within their um, thresholds or their SLAs. Activity health means that um, I have maybe some alerts or some um, 
issues that have been identified, and they may or may not currently be impacting my value stream health. Uh, so th this is the value stream dashboard. Uh, these are the value stream cards. And the one that we'll focus on in this demo is, is the pet store value stream. Now I can click on that value stream card and quickly look at the activity going on in that value stream, such as the alerts that are being generated, um, maybe some informational alerts telling me what's, what's taking place. So this is that console. Eric showed this in his slides as well. And I can quickly see in all the phases of my life cycle, plan code, build test, et cetera, exactly what's happening. Uh, currently, things are all green. Uh, we've detected no alerts, so that's good. Eric mentioned rules in that same DLM console. I can go into our rules um, console. This is where I can create and edit rules that will either alert on events flowing from the tools or they can take action. They can execute um, a workflow. They can execute a script. They could call a REST endpoint. Uh, take some kind of action based on events that we see coming out of the tools or out of uh, OpenShift. Okay, so to get started, um, we'll actually make a coding change, right? So as you know, that at the beginning of the life cycle in the planning phase, there's typically a tool uh, such as Jira, which will, um, you know, outline what feature or fix needs to take place. Uh, we integrate with Jira, and we have what's called a traceability view. And currently it's blank because we're at the beginning of the life cycle. But at the end of this demo, we'll come back to this view. And what you'll see is all the events that were triggered that we correlated back to that user story. Okay. All right. So I'm going to go in and make a coding change. I'll go into uh, Eclipse and actually make a coding change and commit and push this to a Git repository. Now that Git repository is already configured uh, for the OpenShift project, uh, the pet store project, so that anytime there's coding change, it will detect that and automatically uh, rebuild the project and, and redeploy it. This works as well with other um, source control systems, such as Subversion and things like that. I need to stage that change, and then we'll actually commit it. And what we'll see when we go into uh, OpenShift, of course, we will see that the build and deploy is has, has started. Okay. All right. So going back to the um, OpenShift console, we can see that the new build has has kicked off. So there we see the build is running. Um, and in a moment, we'll see the deployment uh, start to take place. Now, I've made it to where it's currently resource strained so that during the deployment, we're actually going to encounter a problem. You'll see that it kind of got stuck uh, deploying to the new pod. So, um, of course, Kubernetes detects that problem and automatically result, remediates that problem, but that will populate up to our console that there was actually a pod stuck in pending state due to insufficient resources. If we look at the alert details, what we actually bring in the knowledge base from um, Kubernetes to show how it can be resolved. Of course, uh, we're going to auto remediate that by a DLM calling Kubernetes to perform these steps. We'll call the kube control commands and do and repool it and things like that, which will um, then allow the deployment to continue. So if we go back to um, the OpenShift console, we'll see in fact that it actually did deploy out to the new pods. So now we've got our new build deployed. Okay. Now since it completed successfully, we also see that it completed, and so we automatically resolve the prior alert about the Kubernetes error, and we see that there was a successful deployment to the OpenShift environment. And that successful deployment event also kicked off match to rule and DLM to kick off a workflow or script to execute security scans against that new deployment. Um, here we're using um, Zap, which is kind of an open source tool 
Diane mentioned earlier Aqua Security. We're currently integrating with Aqua Security as well, as well as some others like Contrast Security. So um, we actually kicked off the security scan once we saw a successful deployment. We can go into details for one of those, such as the ZAP scan report. And there you see a URL we can kick off, kick on, click on. And here we can see all the security alerts that are exceptions that were detected by ZAP and, and look at the report as well. Okay. It's also um, very easy within the DLM console to drill in in a certain area. So we can see that, for example, um, you know, deploy has an information alert. So I can just click on deploy and see those uh, alerts. I can click on security, which it turned red, and see the security-related alerts. Now, also after that deployment, um, we told App Dynamics, which is an operational tool, to start monitoring um, that deployment from an operations uh, perspective. So I'm going to generate a 404 error, which is a page not found which will be detected by Splunk. I do that by just typing in an invalid URL. And that is uh, going to be detected by Splunk. Again, this is an IT ops tool. IT ops will probably be using this. And if we go into Splunk, we can see the 404 error that we just generated. So there it is for um, the shop dogs bad URL that we generated. And if we go back again to DLM, we will see as part of our value stream monitoring that ops did detect a problem with our application. So if I refresh, we also see other events came in, but if I refresh, uh, we can see the 404 page not found error. Again, when that event came in, that matched a rule within DLM to create the alert as well as we uh, created automation to automatically open a service desk ticket in ServiceNow. So if we go into ServiceNow and look at uh, incidents created, we'll see that there is in fact a uh, incident created for our 404 error. Okay. So we're also monitoring other events uh, coming from OpenShift. So for example, if Autoscale is configured for our project and OpenShift detects that memory or CPU um, kind of exceeded their, um, their threshold, you see it just scaled up to, from one pod to four pods. And if I refresh, we see, we see that we got the four pods notification that it was automatically scaled. Also when it scales back down, we can notify about that. And other, and other things. So the, the thing is we're monitoring logs from with OpenShift as well as events uh, coming from the OpenShift platform. And again, I can drill into certain areas that I'm interested in. Now if we go back to that JIRA user story, remember I told you that um, when we looked at that blank traceability view, now if we look at it, we can see all the events that occurred um, as, as part of that life cycle that we just went through. So we see the user story, we see the commit took place, the build, the binary, you know, then it was deployed, and then we see some health events at the bottom, you know, that were generated by the monitoring tool. So we talked about uh, automation, we talked about uh, monitoring and alerting. The, thir the third thing that Eric talked about is uh, metrics. You know, we're collecting those events so that we can um, also report on them. So here we can look at our reporting dashboard and we see mean time to resolution, dev cycles to resolution. I can also click on financial analysis and this will give me some of the financial reports that Eric talked about. So I can see how much um, you know, iterations are costing me based on the uh, hours and, and sizings based on those iterations. I can also compare one um, release to a prior release and those types of things. Okay, so Dan, that concludes the demo. Eric, did you have anything that you wanted to uh, wrap up with? I do have a quick summary slide. Um, I could just share that again. That would be great. So I think I just uh, do my share screen again here.
let me do it again. I should be able to export this now. Okay. You should see a summary slide. We do indeed. Excellent. Excellent. Let's go ahead and go to it. Okay. So I like to three things. I, uh, I've always been told that uh, whenever <laughs> To do a presentation is really focus on the three things, and so I like to end in the three things. The first one is I, I told we talked about that and I, you know, the importance of accelerating that DevOps idea to delivery pipeline. This is essential, right? Especially as um, <clears throat> the drive now to be able to customers now to be able to see very competitive new features coming out, capabilities releases. The days of me taking three months or six months to release are over, right? And, and OpenShift now makes it a lot easier, especially when I'm moving into the newer uh, type of deployment te technologies like containerization and things of that nature. The key here is removing those manual tasks and operations. Again, OpenShift does a great job of doing that and be able to uh, quickly identify and remove bottlenecks. And this is where our DLM product comes into play along with um, OpenShift to do this. Um, the visibility across the Planet Ops tool chain, that's very important to be able to look at this holistically. So it's important to be able to integrate, measure, monitor your tool chain for events. And then from there, you can start giving visibility as far as reports, scorecards, like what Don showed, and the analytics um, pieces um, as well. And the last piece is that, that continuous feedback improvement. If I'm measuring, and, and I'm moving from path A to path B, and if I'm able to uh, correct very quickly based upon information that I'm getting back, I mean, we showcased this with the auto scaling that, uh, that uh, OpenShift has for, for capability around that. And we show how DLM also brings that additional information uh, for alerting across, across your plan to ops on value stream. And of course, now, because I, I have this information, I can now start putting automation uh, more automation into play, and that's how I could drive um, drive additional value as well. So there's more information if you want uh, on the on the DevOps Lifecycle Manager product. I have the link here. If you want a little bit more information or a little bit more detail or trialing it, uh, just go to our site. And um, with that, I will turn it over for questions. So that is the next one. And thank you so much, uh, Diane, for uh, for having us. Thank you again. Well, I'm really thrilled that you actually um, you came and, and you did this because it's it, it's been it's been very interesting and enlightening because I, I actually haven't used a DLM tool myself. So um, and I and I've always wondered since you know I'm on I'm at Red Hat and I'm always espousing new technologies and I I constantly see new like your Zap security is new to me and and I'm Aqua security. Like how enterprises deal with all of these, dis, you know, not disparate but separate tools, um, in and all the incoming messaging, you know, and in and, and alerts and everything. And so it it always seemed to me like that, you know, you pick your favorites like Splunk or whatever it is, and you know, you just stick with them. And, but this whole DLM umbrella process, um, it, it is is awesome. Um, and I you know I hadn't seen it demoed. Quite as um, obviously um, successfully on OpenShift as, as I have today, so I really appreciate that. The question I have is um, because there are so many tools out there, what is the process like when a new uh, company brings in uh, yet another tool for managing some bit of the life cycle, um, adding them into um, your DLM offering? Um, is there a way, you know, like? Uh, Don mentioned you're working with Aqua Security. Um, mm -hmm. it, every time I go to a conference, I meet like at least eight other new packages and things that people want me to use. So, so how do people go about getting new and other things integrated into this? Sure, Don, you want to take that one? Yeah, Eric, I'll be happy to. So most of the newer tools um, support webhook functionality where um, we can go into that tool and just configure it to call a webhook uh, anytime they generate one of their events or alerts. And what we have to do on our side is we have to create what's called a transformation so that we can take that raw data, that raw event from that tool 
and transform it to an event that we understand within our platform, within our rules engine and things like that. So most of the modern, most of the newer tools uh, support webhook uh, type mm -hmm. functionality. Uh, almost all of them support some kind of REST API where we could at least periodically you know, poll and go query for events that have happened in the last 30 seconds or whatever. Um, in that case, you know, we have to create more of a, an adapter type integration. But what we're finding with today's tools is almost everyone supports webhook functionality. So it's very, the bottom line is it's very quick, very easy and quick for us to uh, support new tools. Yeah, that's awesome. And it really was a great overview for me and I'm sure for the rest of the audience because there were no other questions. Um, and, you know, the other thing that was really impressive was when you popped up the Kubernetes um, knowledge base uh, messaging. That's probably the first time I've seen someone do a, a decent job of making those pop up at the right moment. Um, that was that was great. So um, I, I really um, appreciate you guys taking the time today to, to walk through this and um, become part of our community. And we look forward to seeing more um, features and seeing you at, at upcoming events as well. And, and when you have another release or another offering um, that you'd like to walk through, please reach out and I'm sure there'll be other folks um, who are interested. If people want to get a hold of you guys, is there, um, what's the best way to do so? So the best way to do so is I have um, our links here, our link information here. And um, if they dial directly, I, I, I think I'm still sharing. You, you see yep. that there? Yep. Yep. That's the best way there. And um, go to our site. And then there we have, because we're a technology company, tab ups there where you can directly connect to me for questions if you like. Okay. Perfect, Eric. Thank you very much. Thank you, Don. And thank you, Franco, for um, being here this morning. And um, this webinar uh, will be up on the blog.openshift.com probably in a day or so and we will get these links added in as well so um, thanks again and we look forward to hearing more from you thank you